All right, folks. Um, good morning. Well, it's morning here, anyways. I don't know when you'll watch this video, but what I have here, folks, is extremely important. Okay, this sighting. Okay, this 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 experience or interaction, whatever you want to call it, that this person is describing in this letter that they write to David Politis is so typical of what is going on, and it, encapul it encapsulates so many things that I see in spiritual warfare that, I mean, I'm going to actually just do a video to tell you to go watch this video, all right? Starting at 13 minutes, 55 seconds into this video here, folks, and I'm going to put the link to this video in my video's description, and when I share it, look here, folks, you might not know this, but I can start it at 13 minutes, 55 seconds in, so I'm going to click that, I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to stick this link to this video in the, in the details of my video. But here, before you watch this video, let me point out, because so much information is shared, I want to make a few points so people understand why I think this video and why this report is so relevant and so typical of so many other, uh, so many other reportings that I get or sightings from people. All right. First thing, folks, it begins with this man seeing a flicker, right? People experiencing spiritual warfare, they'll see a flicker. They'll see a little flash of a light. Sometimes they call them fairies. Or they'll catch like a shadow being kind of moving around out of the corner of their eye. And then when you look straight at it, it disappears, okay? That's what this man describes happens, except he's describing a flicker, right? Okay. That is very common amongst people that are suffering spiritual warfare, folks. Okay? Now, he reports that these beings are 10 to 15 feet tall. They're humanoid-shaped. They flicker and shift in and out of being translucent, which means you can see through them, almost like, he, I'll use his words, he describes it as trying to look at something through an empty water bottle. You know something's behind there, but it's like your vision is obscured, like they're even like even like almost you're trying to look, through, look at something through water. They're, it's just a translucent shape of something that you can literally see stuff behind it, like it's just showing you what's behind it, but you can see the shape of a humanoid being moving, right? This being will shift from that translucent form while it's under light, then once it walks out of the light, it's back in the shadow form again. People, A lot of people call those things shadow people, okay? Now, the reportings of shadow people range from all sizes. Some people see them small, some people see them childlike size, and some people report they're 10 or 15 foot tall, like 10 or 15 feet tall, like this man's reporting, okay? More on that later, okay? And I want to drive home again the fact that as it walked under the light, it was translucent. And once it got out of the light, that it became like a shadow being type creature again. All right. Okay. These beings are moving slowly as if to travel in a great distance, right? Okay. That, folks, you would think that that would be an uncommon thing. But actually, I'm hearing more and more of this. And I've got a theory on that that I'll get to here as I go on. But it's just better if I fill in the blanks first. All right. Okay. Now, this being is going to interact with him, but before one of the beings is going to interact with him, he's going to say that it's behind the cab of his crane, right? And he's going to say, even though the ones he's watching are moving very slowly, the one behind his cab is going to move extremely fast and be in his cab and like, you know, in, in a very impressive fashion, very fast. I can't remember exactly the words he says, but that's typical because people who see these things say, it's almost like they can manipulate time. It's like we are moving slower through time than they are, right? I'm not going to get into that, you know, deep kind of theories on how that operates. That's not that's not what I want to put in this video. I just want to make a few points and, and encourage you guys to, to listen to this account, okay? When this being first begins to interact with him, he sees all these vibrant colors. It's my theory that he might be seeing through like that kind of translucent camouflage as this being is leaning into him. And it's approaching him, and there's probably contact. And, and truth, folks, it's being probably in some way, like, literally touched this man and maybe even entered his body to some level, you know. It's a lot of speculation. I won't spend a whole lot of time on that, but I think it needs to be said, all right? He says there's telepathic communication, right? No audible words are spoken, but this thing is communicating to him in his head. Very common with people who see these beings or experience com uh, spiritual warfare, right? Okay. This being has the ability after after he sees the vibrant lights and whatnot. This being he says this being seems familiar to him. So once again, you got the familiarity. He says, and I'm quoting here, like seeing an old family member. Now, how many accounts of people that have sleep paralysis, sleep paralysis, and see like their dead grandpa or grandma or whatever? That you know, once again, I think this demonstrates their ability 
to manipulate our perception and make us think that they are someone that we know, right? Okay, I'm going to move on from that. I could I could spend an hour on that, but I'm going to I'm just going to move on. I don't want to bore you with it. All right. Okay. It told him that the other beings are different than him, that they don't want to interact with him, right? That they would not and they wouldn't be happy. And he says, "Do not whatever you do, don't communicate in any way or don't move in which these beings would know that we're communicating, right? So it's it's obviously breaking some kind of rules. And I believe that's part of spiritual law. More on that later, right? But it's not supposed to interact with him. It's communicating to him that it's the other beings would be upset if they knew that this being was interacting with him, okay? He gets sick afterwards. He says he pukes. In my opinion, probably due to stress, you just see something that totally shatters your your you know your your perception of reality, and you understand that now supernatural beings exist. Yeah, you might puke. David Politis in the video brings up radiation and this and that, and just kind of speculates that I just think the dude's emotionally worked up, right? Okay, very important. After he sees this being and has this interaction with this being, okay. Now notice he. Not a Christian, didn't command this being to leave, didn't break the connection, right? So in my opinion, in my experience, an attachment was made with this being and this man. And through these attachments, if you followed me very long at all, you know it's my belief that they can follow bloodlines. So if they, if the father will allow these things to linger, it can gain access to the family and the children, right? So what happens? Well, then uh, the, this is actually this man's wife that's writing this letter to Politus or David Politis, she says that her son now sees this in the backyard, and it whistles. Now, another thing, and a lot of paranormal experiences, people are seeing, having interactions with Bigfoot, and this, that, and the other, these beings will whistle, they'll beat on trees, they'll do this and that, and mind you, the beings that he's seen are 10 to 15 feet tall, so I think there's a correlation between, like, what someone would call a Sasquatch being, and these, and this is why... I really just don't have time anymore for people who think that Bigfoot is Gigantus Pithecus or whatever you call that word. They think he's just a giant ancient ape that is not a, that doesn't have a spiritual quality to his existence or that the being can't cloak itself. Folks, that just does not jive with what people are saying. Now, are these beings taking on the form of a Bigfoot to freak us out and scare us, or are they actually that form part of the time? Who knows? But we need to go by what people that are having these sightings say and stick with what is being reported and not get on the back end and try to just reason it all away and say, oh, that's Gigantopithecus from blah, 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 blah. Folks, that's nonsense in my opinion. I don't mean to disrespect anybody who believes that, but there is no reason based on the accounts of people who see these beings to continue to believe that this is just a flesh and blood being like Gigantopithecus. That's nonsense to me. All right, moving on. This, man said, this man's wife states in the letter that he is one-eighth Native American and he's about to be confirmed by whatever tribe he is from, okay? That's relevant, once again, because of the bloodlines, folks. And if you follow people who talk about these things, most of one of the factors, like David Plytus will point out, the abductions are mostly by boulders, this, that, and the other. Well, one of those other factors are, as most of these people have a religious belief, right? A religious belief system they're either Native American and are from that culture, folks, or they are from, like, a religious sect but that some people, you know, ostensibly you would think that it's Christian, but it's not. It's Freemasonic beliefs. And through these beliefs, these fallen entities can communicate and attach to people, and it seems to be that those are the people that are being taken, right? You've allowed this being to interact with you, You've given it spiritual rights to you, and it's my belief that through that, that accounts for the majority of the people that get abducted and why they get abducted. You have uh, you basically allowed them to bring you into their kingdom. Okay, you know, for 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 lack of a better term, you've basically invited this upon yourself, and they are impressing beings. You give them an inch, they'll take a mile. Right? Okay. Now, another thing I want to bring up is the woman mentions a genetic anomaly, but she doesn't say what it is, all right? Don't really know. A lot of people think that maybe uh, RH negative blood factors in this, that, and the other. I, at this point, we don't know, folks. I mean, David Politis has stated, I think he even states in this video, that there's no way to obtain that the, that blood information. You can't find out what somebody's blood is who gets abducted or died. That, that information is private. It's protected, okay? It'd be interesting to do a study on it, but without without... Being able to obtain that information, you can't qualify any, any of those theories. All right. Very, very important. The woman states that this happens during the Thomas fire in California, right? Okay. 
Now, why you may wonder why I'm trying to tie it into Bigfoot. Now, hold on a minute here, folks, before you laugh me out of the room here, so to speak. This man says these beings are 10 to 15 feet tall. They are moving in a group. And this Thomas Fire, a lot of people that report Bigfoot sightings or, or big breakouts to where nothing was happening before, and now there's Bigfoot sightings all over the place out of nowhere. It is, they are developing the opinion because of there are local fires when this stuff happens that by these that, that forest is their home for whatever reason maybe it's because you know forests are more highly oxygenated maybe it's because they can hide better in the forest who knows but forests are basically believed to be where these things dwell and how many how many ancient ancient story or not ancient stories but like um you know stories do we have in antiquity about uh, mystical forests and whatnot right okay but anyways these forests burned down and then people would say well you know what we didn't have any problem with bigfoot on our property until we had that forest fire you know about 50 miles from here and it is it's in my sus i suspect that these beings could be migrating out of these forests that are basically their homes and looking for somewhere else to stay after these fires happen right i think that's very very possible you know and um basically folks those are just the key points that i wanted to make that i want you to to focus on and I want to kind of like what your appetite and your interest in this video before I explain this to you and then when David Politis reads this video and he explains what this woman says hopefully you can kind of take what I said and, and piece the puzzles together of what I'm trying to tell you and then you can decide whether you want to believe it or not folks but uh, that's it for this video I just wanted to give a quick explanation as to why I think this video is so relevant and why I think everybody needs to see it again the link to this video start at 13 minutes 55 seconds in when I share it, I'll hopefully have that timestamp for you. It should start right then when you click on the link. And the link for that video will be in the description of my video right here, folks. So um, take a listen to it, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on it, folks. If he says something that I didn't catch, if you think relevant, please comment on the video. Send me a message. Um, you know, I'd, I'd like to hear back from you. Anyways, um, that's it for this video. God bless you all in Jesus' name.